This is Brent with Likens Motorsports with part three of this Ford uh, 496 cubic inch FE build. I obviously forgot to record the intro before I started doing some assembly videos, but uh, we won't tell anybody. So sit back and enjoy uh, some more assembly and um, be sure and hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, let's begin. Now we got the timing cover going on. I use just a really thin layer of silicone in between um, the gasket and the block. And again, another really thin layer between the gasket and the timing cover. The cam bolt's been torqued and checked and rechecked and checked and checked again. And uh, some lubricant on the chain, and we'll get the timing cover on. Okay, timing cover is on. I use this centering tool. Um, makes it really easy to keep the timing cover centered on the crankshaft. And then I try to pay attention to how the, uh, the bottom of the timing cover lines up with the block as well. Keep in mind, this bolt right here hits water. Um, it doesn't on a BBM block. It does on a factory block, so put some silicone on that thing. Uh, when you screw it in, as well as this water pump bolt. All right, on to the next step. Okay, moving on, got the Romac harmonic balancer on, timing pointer, and I've got my piston stop in use again to find true top, top dead center. And um, we're rocking, rocking this one back and forth to make sure the pointer is in alignment. Uh, this needs to be checked on every engine uh, sometimes they're out one or two degrees, and some of these pointers allow a little bit of adjustment. Uh, ATI balancers are notorious for being seven degrees out. So just another reason to uh, double check everything. All right, so we've got our timing cover on, and um, we've got our oil pan on now. Um, it's hard, it was hard for me to, to try and do a video and talk and think through this oil pan installation all at once. There's a lot to installing an AVA Cobra pan. Um, you've got a windage tray and the pickup bolts to uh, the windage tray. you got two gaskets and silicone and everything has to go in, um, you know, consecutively really quickly. A few tips here these pans uh, check your oil pickup clearance you should have around 3 8 7 16 um, check all the fitment of all the holes and you will probably have to enlarge all the holes uh, I usually do so that all the bolts will start um, I like to put studs on the front two and on the back two so that when I lay my gasket down and I lay my windage tray down and I tighten the pickup, uh, what happens is it likes to make the windage tray squirm when you tighten that pickup nut. Um, so the studs kind of hold everything in place and alignment, and then you can put your other gasket on and then your oil pan and go through all the bolts. So um, this is a big pan. I think it's uh, nine quarts plus the filter. Um, so it holds a lot of volume. Fairly low profile though. And um, let's get some cylinder heads on. All right, we got our trick flow heads bolted on. Uh, obviously you need to do these in, in a sequence, starting in the middle and working outward. Uh, I usually do it in three steps. Uh, these torque at 100 pound feet. I usually do something like 35, 70, and 100. And then um, I usually wait about a day or so and then go through and retorque one at a time. I just back one fastener off and then pull to 100 pound feet in one swing because the gaskets do compress and the fasteners do stretch a little bit over time. So um, I always go through and retorque. Lifters are in. Uh, these are Morel. I know they say Howard's on them, but um, when Morel is out of stock, uh, Howard's, I can usually get Howard's lifters and they're made by Morel. They're exactly the same. Uh, just 
high quality stuff. These are standard tribal lifters. And um, next step is to fit, uh, do a test fit of the intake manifold. So I'm gonna uh, get the intake and set it on and then I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our Performer RPM sitting on here. And uh, the FE is very unique in the fact that the gaskets, uh, the intake manifold gaskets are essentially submerged in oil. Um, here is your, your valve cover rail and the intake manifold gaskets will be between the head and, and the intake. And uh, you get a constant raining of oil um, to the gasket. So if you have any voids or gaps or uh, the intake isn't straight or it's not sitting right or whatever, uh, it's, you have a potential there to suck in oil, uh, which is not good. So you have to be uh, extra vigilant on intake manifold installation on an FE. Um, if you notice, I do not have any gaskets uh, sitting here. And I do that to check uh, the fitment the angle between the intake manifold and the cylinder head. I'm looking for for any significant gaps there. Um, you notice I do have a small gap between the china wall areas and valve cover rails are flush. I've also already done a um, an inspection with my um, what in the world do you call that? Um, the scope. I've got a, a scope so I can shove it down the plenum, down in the runner and make sure the intake and the, the cylinder head port openings match up. So right now, everything is perfect about this intake. The ports line up, valve cover, flanges line up really nice. We have a gap in the china wall, the bolt holes. Let me get a light so you can see that. Uh, so the bolt holes line up really good um, and we're off basically the thickness of an intake manifold gasket which is about 60 thousandths so I'm going to cut 60 off of each uh, flange of the intake manifold and that will put us back to perfect with the gaskets installed so um, and just another quick note, I'm going to use silicone here in the China rail, uh, China wall rail. And, um, you know, if I know a lot of guys like to use cork, but here's the situation where, you know, this is probably a, I don't know, 40, 50 thousandths gap. Um, after I cut the flanges, you know, if I wanted to use cork here, I would have to cut the end, the ends, the china wall and the intake as well to make that work. Uh, not necessary. I've seen more problems with cork than anything else. And uh, I just run a bead of silicone and blend it in really nicely. And you, you won't be able to see it. Um, so if you were to use cork here and bolt this intake down, uh, it would hold it would hold the intake off the heads and you'd have a problem there. So just a couple things to, to watch out for. And um, I'm gonna cut the divider down on this intake and shape that really nicely too. Get us a little bit more plenum volume for this large cubic inch engine. And uh, then we'll go on to the next step. All right, uh, this was part three, I think. So. Uh, part four will be probably doing some valve train assembly and um, bolting up the rest of the engine. All right, have a nice day.